Hello everyone, my name is Mary Auld and I am author of How to Build an Orchestra. And I am Elisa Paganelli and I am the illustrator of this wonderful book, How to Build an Orchestra. Hi everyone. This book began with its title, interestingly enough. Um, someone at the publishing house came up with the idea of a title for a book which he thought would be very good, which was How to Build an Orchestra. But he didn't do anything else with it. He actually then, except he contacted me and he said, I've got this idea for a book called How to Build an Orchestra. Um, would you like to develop the idea for us? And would you like to find an appropriate partner is actually what he said, which sounds a bit strange. But what he meant was he wanted to find someone who was um, able to supply music to go with this How to Build an Orchestra. So um, that was where it all began. And I approached the London Symphony Orchestra and said, would you like to do a book called How to Build an Orchestra, which is, by this stage I worked it out, all about how you put an orchestra to get together and all the different instruments of the orchestra and the sort of music it makes. And to my delight, they said yes. And that was brilliant because, as I say, they brought music to a book, which you can imagine is a bit difficult. They bought some amazing expertise. You will see a name called Rachel Leach on the front cover, but not the front cover, sorry, the inside of the book. And she has been brilliant in terms of helping me with my musical uh, information and making sure what I said was right and all those kind of things. Um, and also lots and lots of suggestions of music that I hadn't heard of before. Um, I, I do know something about music. I used to play the flute a lot. I sing in a choir and all that kind of thing. So I, I am very involved with music and I absolutely love it. Um, but Rachel's was in a different league and it was great to be able to work with her. So that was Rachel Leach. Um, the other thing they actually suggested we did was um, introduce some characters from the actual orchestra. And one of the main characters of an orchestra is, of course, the conductor. He's the person who leads the orchestra. And the London Symphony Orchestra happened to have one of the world's most famous conductors is someone called Sir Simon Rattle. So I'm now going to read a little bit from the book and um, it starts with Sir Simon Rattle. So here we go. Meet the conductor. This is Simon. Simon loves music. He loves to listen to it and he loves to make it. Sometimes Simon hums to himself. Sometimes he sings and occasionally he whistles but that really isn't enough for him. He wants to share music with everyone. That's why he's a conductor. A conductor is the man or woman who leads an orchestra. An orchestra is made up of lots of musicians playing different musical instruments. The conductor, someone like Simon, makes sure they play together and in time. Simon shows them the speed with a baton. He also shows, shows the orchestra how to feel the music with his arms, body and face. Together, a conductor and an orchestra make beautiful music that everyone can enjoy. And actually the great thing about this book is you can enjoy music as you read um, because there are these panels with listen music and they suggest you music to listen to and you can go online and find it. Simon has been looking at piles of scores. A score is a book with music in it, written with dots on lines. They seem all jumbled up to most of us, but Simon reads them as musical notes, the notes to play when you make music. A composer has written each of these scores. Composers make up music in their heads and write it down so that other people can play it. Over the centuries, men and women have composed lots of different music. Music that tells stories. Music that makes you cry. Music that makes you smile. Music that makes you dance. Music that makes you feel things you simply can't put into words. Simon's scores are big. They show him what every instrument in the orchestra is playing and when. When he reads the score, he hears the music in his head. He has chosen two pieces to perform. He needs an orchestra to play them. But Simon has a problem. 
he hasn't got an orchestra. He has to build one. The auditions. To build an orchestra, Simon has to find lots of talented musicians. He has put out a call to players around the world to come to auditions. He will listen to each one play and then choose his orchestra. The auditions will take a long time. You need a lot of instruments and a lot of musicians to make a big orchestra. For his two pieces, Simon needs 84 musicians to play all the instruments on his list. And here is the instruments on the list, which I think I'm now going to pass over to Eliza to tell you all about drawing them. OK, thanks. For me, the real challenge was that I really don't have any musical skills. I don't play any instruments, even if I always wanted to play the piano, I have to confess. But this project, it was for me a real journey, as I hope it will be for you while you read the book, because I got to know how an orchestra will be put together. Starting from each single instrument, and I really had to go into details really into details. For example, I got to know that you need to hold a violin with your left hand and bow with your right one. It's not the same if you do the, the other side. So I got to know really what was needed to play an instrument as if I had to play it one myself. And what has been useful, apart from the very precious um, <laughs> advice from Mary, was the LSO Play website, where you really can go close to each section of the orchestra, because, you know, the orchestra has sections, uh, depending on which instruments are included in that section. And I didn't know that, because I used to see on TV a whole orchestra together, and it was nice to see, but when you go into detail, you get to know that there are groups of players put together to uh, develop a message with that specific sound and why I said a message because when you when music when you listen to a music you receive a message you receive an image music can evoke images and this is what I have to do to try to translate those image I had in my mind by listening the tracks you are going to listen from the book and to draw them for example starting from shapes like this and in the end at the end of the book shapes will become a real whole world because music starts from simple notes and then it become a whole melody especially if you have lots of players together like you have in a whole orchestra so to me it has been a challenge and what's challenging it also it, it is also to pick the my favorite track because there are a lot of nice symphony in the book and i could say that one just one of my favorite is bolero what about you mary what's your favorite one <laughs> i thought you were going to ask me that and I'm, it's always hard to choose so um I think I mentioned earlier that I have a bit of a background in music and I learned the flute for many years and played the flute in an orchestra actually. I'm only at school, but I did absolutely love it. And so I think the piece I'm going to choose as my favorite is the Prelude à la Prémidie d'une Faune, excuse the bad French accent, by Claude Debussy. Um, and it's a really, really beautiful piece. And it, it was really interesting listening to Eliza say about all the different things about how when you listen to music, you get an image in your head and things like that. Obviously, one of the challenges of creating this book is we're talking about something that is a totally different oral communication. It's not... It, it's not a written. It's not written words. It's it's not pictures. It's something you hear in your head and you react and respond to. But we do talk a lot about colours in music, and that's something that that interests me. That you you do whatever happens somehow. Music. You start to see images. You start to feel emotions and all that. Sort of thing. That's what's so exciting about it. And certainly, when I listen to the prelude, um, I just see wonderful colours swirling around and um, all that kind of thing. So, in fact, 
as you can see, Eliza really captured that sense of movement and, and some wonderful, um, lovely afternoon colours there um, uh, when she got to draw it. So, yes, uh, it, it's very exciting. And it, we'd love to know when you get to read the book and things like that about all the ones you like to listen to as well. I did absolutely love the Beethoven uh, as well at the end of the book, which, I mean, is a very, very famous piece of music for the orchestra, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. What we are going to do now together is to try to build up a whole set of single visual notes and build an artwork. Well, music really can make sex experience lots of different emotions and before getting into the arty part uh, of this session i would like you to try to close your eyes and listen to short pieces of music that i'm going to play and say try to name an emotion that uh, the music brings up for you For example, this piece of music makes me feel calm. Let's try another one. This cheers me up. Next. Ooh, this music is heavy dark and makes me feel anxious. Next. What about this? This makes me feel light-hearted. Um, next and last piece of music. There's tension here. This makes me feel scared, as if something is about to happen very quickly and very soon. So just as music brings up emotions when we listen to it, it brings up colors and shapes. And I want to try now to see what the short sounds I'm going to play suggest to you in terms of colors and shapes. Let's try with the first sound. Did you hear that? Oh, let's listen again. Well, this sound makes me think of something round and gray, fat, big, huge, heavy somehow. Let's try with another sound. This sound recalls, from my point of view, something wavy, smooth. Next. Hmm. What about this shape for this trumpet sound? Next. To me, this sound is somehow sharp. Let's go to the fun part. Why don't build up your own set of visual sounds in order to compose a visual symphony? So, just like this, they can be our visual sounds and I'm going to compose my own artwork, but you can do your own and perhaps you can do it by picking the track, your favorite track from How to Build an Orchestra. I'm going to show you what I have done, but remember, the best thing in art and music is that you can interpret everything freely. So just forget about this and build up your own set, your personal set of shapes and visual sounds and share it with me because I'm really curious to see what you come up with.
Eliza, that was wonderful and very inspiring. I hope you all enjoy creating your own visual sound effects, is what I. Um, so uh, we will look forward to seeing those. Well, I also hope you are now feeling very excited about how you build an orchestra and you've understood, begun to realise that we have got our four sections together. So we have actually now built our orchestra. We have our, our brass our woodwind and our percussion and a few special things on top of that. So we've got all the sections of the orchestra, they've come together, they've rehearsed and they've rehearsed two pieces, they've rehearsed Bolero, which was Eliza's favourite, and then I mentioned the Beethoven, which is Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, which is one of my favourites. So I'm just going to read about the most exciting thing of all when you build an orchestra, which is the big night. That is the night of the performance and when you really get to share all the music and all that hard work and everything you've put in together comes to life. It's, it's like making a book in a way, but it's just a lot more instantaneous. I have to say, Eliza and I worked on this book for really quite a long time together. So um, anyway, um, I'm going to read you just one last section, which is the end of the book. I don't think I'm really giving away the plot and um, uh, then we'll just... Uh, uh, say bye bye to you anyway. Well, back to the book. Simon has actually built his orchestra. He's found his strings, his woodwind, his brass, his percussion, and a couple of other very important instruments too. They've rehearsed, and now they're ready for the really important part of building an orchestra the performance. Here we go. The big night. It's the night of the concert. It will begin with Bolero. The hall is packed and the audience watches excitedly as the orchestra comes on stage. The oboe plays a note and there is a huge noise as all of the other instruments tune to it. Then silence. First Roman, he's the leader of the orchestra, and then Simon, our conductor, come on stage to huge applause. Then silence again. Simon picks up his baton and the snare drum begins with the cellos and violas beneath. The violas are played pizzicato, sideways on, a bit like guitars. The flute starts the melody and the clarinet picks it up. Now the bassoon comes in with the next part of the melody. The harp adds harmony to the cellos and violas. And still the snare drum plays. The melody passes around. The E-flat clarinet, the oboe, the flute again. Simon brings in the saxophones. There are two sizes. First the tenor and then the soprano. Now all the strings are playing the pizzicato bass line. It's getting louder. The audience are completely hypnotised as the piccolo, French horn and celeste pick up melody. The oboes and clarinets follow, and now the trombones slide in. Simon keeps that steady pace. Roman and the first violins take the tune. Simon brings the trumpets in. They turn up the volume. The woodwind and the violins build the melody once again. The timpani is adding to the bass. Now everyone is playing. A change in the music pitch adds a clever twist and the music comes to its crashing end. Then silence. The audience wakes from its trance and the applause begins. 
the night finishes with the pastoral symphony. All the practising pays off. Just like Simon wanted, he and the orchestra share the music they love with the audience. The listeners are carried away on a musical adventure. They hear music that tells a story. Music that makes you smile. Music that makes you dance. Music that makes you jump. And music that makes them cry and feel a sense of bliss. As Simon bows and listens to the applause, he feels proud. He has built an orchestra. Together, they have made beautiful, fabulous music that everyone can enjoy. He can't wait for the next concert. So that is how to build an orchestra. <laughs> if only it was that easy. Having said which, Eliza and I have really, really enjoyed making this book together and with all the other people involved. Um, we hope very much that you enjoy it. Yeah. And um, please feel free to share your comments, your video. If you play an instrument, please tag us. And if you do your own artwork, please tag us and follow us on social media because there's more to come after this first book. But we don't want to reveal anything for now. So please stay tuned because there are news to come. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with us today. Yes, thank you very much. Do listen to the music, do read the book and enjoy making your own music and your own art and being creative because that's what this is all about. Thank you. Bye. Bye.